Thousands of years ago, this three-dimensional existence began, or at least it appeared to begin. When it began and how it began has been the age-old question that has been toyed with but never adequately answered to this day. The information presented in this video and the companion blog site IlluminatiMatrix.wordpress.com lays the groundwork and the foundation for when this all began. Prepare yourself as this information will not be easy to assimilate. You'll experience all types of emotions as you attempt to comprehend the information. If it becomes difficult to go through the whole video in one take, leave it for a while, even a few days. But do persevere and grasp as much information as quickly as you can. So if you're ready, we're going to have a look at where we came from. The screen in front of you is empty. Now imagine the empty screen is the totality of everything that is. Even though there's no shape, no color, and no sound. As you look at the screen in front of you, what do you see? You see nothing. As you look at the screen in front of you, what do you know? You know a lot. Even though you don't see anything on the screen, you still know and have locked up inside you a vast storehouse of knowing. In this scenario we're contemplating, what you know may be correct or may be incorrect. It makes no difference. You still have an incredible amount of information recorded somewhere within you, even though you can't see anything. Imagine again that all that knowing you possess has within it the power and strength to exist forever. There's no beginning and no end. You have the power and wisdom to be eternal. Imagine that you're filled with this knowing and completely possessed with this eternal power and strength. This is about as powerful as anyone could hope to be. Let's imagine that this knowing not only exists in you, but it exists in every person on the planet. It's not something you have to go out and find, it's just there, in you, and in everyone that ever walked on the face of the earth. Now imagine that someone, or a group of individuals with that same eternal power, also wanted to have your power and my power. Imagine that this group wanted to take possession of all that is ours. However, they can't take it from us by force because it's locked inside us. And it is who we are. Still, they desire to at least control it. This group wished for our power to work in unison with their power. And the enormity of that combined strength of power and knowing would make them greater than the greatest the most massive force in existence, they would appear to be God. The information presented here will show you who and what God is, what religion is, what science and intellectualism is, and how to eliminate the control these fabricated illusory systems have on our lives. Keep watching the screen and it will be demonstrated how they went about taking control of our existence, how they took control of our reality, and took control of our eternity. It will be demonstrated how to take back that control of our existence, our reality, and our eternity right now. We'll see how to reconnect to our wisdom and awareness, which is the power and strength, the knowing of the eternal state. This wisdom and awareness is something we already have. There's nothing we have to do except reconnect to it. Here's how they disconnected us from wisdom and reality. Through a process called thinking, the root, the seed of manipulation, was planted by the patron of thinking. A patron is someone who has the right to appoint or to bestow a privilege. Let's call this patron a proton. The 
positive originator or father of thinking. Let's call this father of thinking thought. The seed of thinking, the seed of this patron father is neutral, not a patron or a po proton, not mature enough to have seed of its own, simply neutral. We'll call this a neutron, and we'll call it the sun. This is the seed or son of the father. This neutron sun seed is one with the father proton, matching one for one, only a bit smaller in size. The sun isn't the positive originator of thought, he's neutral, he's a peaceful sun. This is the beginning of thought, the beginning of thinking. The next step in the manipulation process is the thinking process is the introduction of seduction. It's a grand concept to fabricate the concept of thinking, but just one thought isn't going to manipulate anyone loose of their connection to reality. This group of thinkers then thought to introduce something that would manufacture a form of perpetuity in this whole notion of taking control. Something that would be a place of reproducing the whole thinking process over and over and over again, endlessly, with virtually no effort other than directing the course of thinking until it reached its final conclusion of total control and the complete submission of everything unto them. The introduction of this next stage of thinking would have to cause motion, vibrations, and energy. Without motion or energy, the proton and neutron, the father and son would lie dormant, nothing more than a thought without purpose. The concept of an opposite to the positive proton was conjured up. We'll call this elect lady the negative attraction that would perpetually spark the imagination of the father proton. We'll call this elect lady the electron. The electrons would be small, much smaller than the father proton or the neutron sun. In fact, over 1800 times smaller. This electron would spin around the proton and neutron, held in orbit by the attraction to the male, yet keeping a distance, yet flirting endlessly for the male to pounce. But why stop there? Introduce another elect lady and another. Make it a whole harem of elect ladies flirting and circling the male, creating a womb of protection for the seed of the father to grow and reproduce another just like themselves again and again endlessly. We'll call this womb the nucleus. This womb will be the room, the birthplace of the neutron sun seed within the womb of the mother. This mother we'll call matter. This womb of the mother, this room of matter, is called the nucleus, for it produced the nuclei of us. Matter is that which occupies space. Even though this mother electron is just a thought from the group of thinkers, it orbits the father and the son at the speed of thought, thereby occupying space, conjuring up the illusion of matter. Observe closely. The nucleus forms a hexagon in this two-dimensional demonstration. The hexagon is the form of two overlapping triangles which have been created by the electrons orbiting the proton and neutron. This hexagon is the hex placed on humanity through the adoration of the mother, the woman. This has been implanted through the thought process of this unseen group of thinkers. From the void and emptiness of nothing, thought conjured up something. Within this grouping of the father proton, the sun neutron, and the mother electron, the whole of everything is formed. This is the first atom, the beginning in the womb of thought. This is the matrix womb. Thought formed this energy that glowed as an electrically charged atom. This glow in turn produced light. What you see in front of you is a two-dimensional representation of the atom symbol that represents a ray of light. This was created or conjured up by thought. 
Thoth is, the Egyptian god Thoth, the creator of almost every activity known to man. Thoth is spelled T-H-O-T-H. This god is responsible for the alphabet, writing, speaking, the sciences, religion, you name it, and Thoth is responsible for it. The Egyptians credited Thoth with the words of science, religion, philosophy, and magic. The Greeks credited Thoth as the inventor of astronomy, astrology, the science of numbers, mathematics, geometry, land surveying, medicine, botany, theology, civilized government, the alphabet, reading, writing, and oratory. Thoth was the true author of every work of every branch of knowledge, both human and divine. This concept of thought as the Egyptian god Thoth has its counterpart in Greek mythology as Hermes and to the Romans his Mercury. These are just different names for the same god. El, spelled E-L, is mentioned as the father of all gods in Egyptian mythology. El is the inspiration for the term electricity. Electricity is produced by the elect lady, the electrons of the atom. All those who were faithful to this god El, the god of matter, became the elect, the chosen and faithful. These were the saints of God who were promised riches and power and would rule and reign with El if they would just put their faith in him. This was the covenant, the agreement made between God and man. This covenant was kept in an ark. The Ark of the Covenant. The Ark is the electrical arcing characteristic of electricity. If anyone touched the Ark other than the high priest, they would be struck dead. El is the great architect of the universe, the creator God, the bringer of light. The word architect is again referring to the arcing ability of electricity and the manipulating aspect of light as it conjures up everything that it's able to be thought up. As demonstrated, everything in this three-dimensional existence is the result of thought. Thought was inspired by El, the father of all gods. Everything we see is of thought or light. The, the atom symbol formed by thought is another Egyptian god called Atom. Atom is spelled A-T-U-M and was called the complete one, the finisher of the earth. Atom was the one who returned to the watery chaos at the end of the creative cycle. Remember this characteristic about Atom. He's the one who returns to watery chaos at the end of the creative cycle. This is a major subliminal message established thousands of years ago. To understand the significance of this statement, read the information presented on the companion blog site to this video. The interconnection to the global warming scenario is presented at length. The address is illuminatimatrix.wordpress.com or go to briancamela.com and click on Illuminati Matrix. This is the first man, woman, the first Adam. Adam and Eve are the names given to the two reproductive characteristics of the atom and the light. Adam refers to the atom form, and Eve refers to the light emanating from that form. Eve is the dawning of creation, the coming of the light. Eve is likewise the evening, the end of the light. This symbolizes the beginning and the end the Alpha and the Omega of the bringer of light. Adam and Eve together are symbolic names for the electrically charged atom symbol which in turn symbolize the light bringer, the bright morning and evening stars. Together they represent the creator of light, the creator God called Lucifer who is the light bringer. The Adam and Eve that formed the light form the lie or deception created by the light, the light is the lie. This lie is the eye of the illuminated ones or the enlightened ones. This is the all-seeing eye. 
In this way, Eve, the symbolic morning and evening light, produces the physical light, which is the ability to see. The ability to see in this three-dimensional existence is produced by the electricity contained within the atom. We are further told that thought gave birth to Nefertum. He was a type of young atom. Nefertum was referred to as the sunrise, which means he who is beautiful. This corresponds to the concept of Lucifer, the bright and morning star, who led the way for the sunrise and the approaching dawn. You can see from all this mythology that it is firmly entrenched in the structure of an atom symbol. The atom symbol was conjured up with just the slightest notion of thought from the Egyptian sun god Thoth. The light now fills the earth with its rays. This is yet another Egyptian sun god called Re, or Ra, or again Amun-Ra. This name, like the names of all the Egyptian gods, are inspired by the form of the atom symbol. The atom symbol is the oldest sex ritual symbol in the world, and if you look closely at it, you'll see that the six-pointed star is formed by the intersecting lines of the electron orbits. The six-pointed star is also referred to as the oldest sex ritual symbol in the world. The six-pointed star is the star of Lucifer, the star of God, and the star of David, the divider, the duality God, and is the star of Israel. What has just been demonstrated is how everything was conjured up through thought. If you noticed, the words of the functioning elements in this demonstration and the names ultimately given to the different characteristics used sounded similar to each other. This is the basis and nature of manipulation. These similarities, although different, are close enough to send a message to our powerful subconscious reasoning convincing us to register a certain thought even though we're unaware in a total sense of what that thought is. This is called subliminal messaging. It is the foundation and the basis for the total manipulation and disconnection of all humanity from reality. This is the tool used by the Luciferian egregore of thinking beings to bring all of humanity under total control, to make us servants subject to lunacy, thereby causing us to relinquish our strength and freedom that these Luciferian thinkers might reign as God. It's this knowledge called Kabbalism, the ability to manipulate matter one molecule at a time, that the elite of the world have used to perpetuate the kingdom of these fabricated gods on earth. Thinking themselves to be the saints of God, the elect and the divinely appointed rulers of humanity, they apply the principles of subliminal messaging taught to them by the Luciferian group of thinkers through the intellectual institutions of the world, thereby creating a hypnotic trance in which all of humanity flounders around in confusion, fear, stress and disease. This Kabbalistic information has been handed down through the religious and intellectual systems that have plagued the world since the beginning of this conjured up creation. Kabbalism kicked into high gear with the onslaught of the Renaissance around the year 1000 AD. The Renaissance literally means the rebirth of thinking. This is not to say that the Luciferian Egregore group stopped thinking previous to that. What this does say is that the push for total domination, total submission, and total control was now on. What we'll focus on next is how this conjuring up of light manipulates all of humanity, and how to reconnect to our awareness and wisdom, and the eternal power that is rightfully ours. Everything that's visible within this three-dimensional space is light. If matter is accelerated to the speed of light, times the speed of light it becomes energy, which is light. All that exists is formed from energy and light. For thousands of years, humanity has contemplated and asked repeatedly, where did we come from? The information you've just heard explained the origin of everything, the source of light, and the creation of all three-dimensional matter, which is energy. 
Before light existed, there was a void of nothingness. A like-minded Luciferian group of beings took upon themselves to control this void of nothingness. This void contains all the greatness of the eternal state. These beings desired to control for themselves all the power and wisdom of this nothingness, and thereby be worshipped as God. Here's how it works. The name Lucifer means light bringer or light bearer. The name Lucifer is derived from the Latin words lucem fer. Lucem means bringer or bearer, and fer means light. Lucem fer is Lucifer. Genesis chapter 1 of the Old Testament fills in without any doubt who the light bringer is and who or what Lucifer is. Genesis 1 verse 1 and 3 states, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. God said, Let there be light, and there was light. We've only read up to verse 3 of Genesis chapter 1, and already a hypnotic trance has been established. Very few will question that there even is a God. So anything that's written after these words is like shooting ducks in a barrel. Interestingly, this same concept of the light bringer, the day star or the bright and morning star, has been applied to Jesus as well. In the New Testament, in Revelation 22.16, we read where Jesus said of himself, I, Jesus, I am the bright and morning star. Here we see that God is Lucifer, the light bringer. However, God is not just one supreme being, but a group entity, an egregore group thought form, agreeing together to appear as God. They've created the world systems of duality, based on right and wrong, good and bad. They play the role of a good God and a bad devil. This Luciferian mindset shows itself in history as the mythical gods of old, each with a particular characteristic. These gods, when taken together, form the egregore group of thinking entities. God said, let there be light. God spoke. Speaking a word requires a thought. The word that this egregore God spoke was a thought. Every thought is a word. All words have sound. Even sounds not audible to our physical ears have sound. Sounds vibrate. Thoughts, which are words, which are sounds, vibrate. Vibration is energy. Energy has a strange characteristic in that it glows. Glowing is light. Therefore, thoughts are light. Everything you see is just a thought. Conjured up by the Luciferian group of thinkers, and everything you see is formed by thought. Following this thought to word to sound trail ultimately leads to the creation of light. The very nature of light is to corrupt. This thought process, called thinking, has created the corruptible three-dimensional realm. Everything in this 3D space corrupts and dies. Light is nothing more than thought, and the thought form of the Luciferian thinkers is designed to create death, thereby controlling humanity through the fear of death. This God it purposely and willfully created the concept known as death, and that's all death is, a concept. Death is an illusion, a manipulation of light through thought. Manipulating humanity with this illusion instills fear and desperation. Fear is the foundational characteristic that allows hypnotic, subliminal, thought, light patterns to be focused and injected into and forced to pass through our crystal brain. Our human three-dimensional brain has the same physical characteristics as that of a solid crystal or prism, except in liquid form. There is nothing godly, loving, or sweet about this group entity or its method of manipulation. For thousands of years, the use of fear and desperation has resulted in murders, wars, bloodletting, and endless disease. Children have been tortured, 
women have been raped, and men have marched blindly off the plank into the ocean of hypocrisy and death. This has all been courtesy of the God of the Bible, the God of love, the God of the Old and New Testaments, the God of the Koran, the God of Buddha, the God of every religion and intellectual system known to man. This is the God of light, the Luciferian light bringer. Genesis 1 continues to say that God saw the light, that it was good. But good for who? Obviously good for those who were using it to control humanity through the manipulation of light. Yet again we have another subliminal. God doesn't say that anything is bad. It's just implied, suggested, implanted. If light is good, then something must be bad. When we consider how we see things in this 3D space, we're told from an intellectual perspective that light enters through the pupil of our eye, where it strikes the back of the eye, where it's reversed, and then travels along a neurological path to our brain, where it's flipped right side up again, and we see an image. Unfortunately, this is incorrect. Light is thought and the thought of what we are intended to see is implanted within the liquid crystal prison of our brain. The suggestion which originated from the Luciferian mindset travels through the crystal brain and similar to a ray of light passing through a rain shower, a rainbow of three-dimensional color, form and sound explodes in front of us. Whatever suggestion is attached to that explosion emanating from our crystal brain determines color, shape, depth, sound, and so on. The things we see, the sounds we hear, the smells we smell, all these details are within the thought, which is the word, the sound, the vibration, the energy, the glowing, and is the light. This has all been implanted in our brains as subliminal suggestion and we believe it. Because we believe our senses and all the suggestion attached to them, it seems real. Even the sun, moon, and stars that reflect light to our eyes make up the hypnotic suggestion to convince us that what we see is real. It's only light. It's just a seductive, illusory, convincing thought form conjured up by the Luciferian group of thinkers. The simplest way to understand this is to imagine a stage hypnotist with his subject in a trance. The hypnotist suggests certain things and the subject is only able to see and hear those things the hypnotist is suggesting. The subject can hear the voice of the hypnotist and true to the suggestion he can see a giraffe or an elephant or whatever is suggested. The hypnotized subject can't see the audience, can't hear them laughing. The subject can only recognize those things the hypnotist suggests. Why can't the hypnotized subject see the audience or anything other than what the hypnotist suggests? Simply because the suggestion is a subliminal thought a word and it created a whole new light pattern to emanate from the entranced subjects eyes his eyes and ears still function but because the thought implanted in the crystal brain has changed then the reality of what seems to be real also changes the hypnotized subjects eyes and ears work perfectly but the reality is the hypnotized subject can't see anything other than the word suggested but why? Why can't the subject in a trance see anything else? Because the audience and everything associated outside the trance state really isn't there. If the audience members were really there, really three-dimensional and really solid, then the eyes of the subject in the trance state would see them. The audience can't be seen because the audience is just light, just a thought, and when the new reality state, the new thought pattern, doesn't include them anymore, they cease to appear as a three-dimensional form. The audience didn't die. They didn't leave the theater. The subliminal messaging changed. 
the reality shifted and they ceased to appear as three-dimensional. From this we have to keep in mind that light goes out of our eye. This is how we see. Light is a thought implanted in our crystal brain and explodes into a three-dimensional rainbow of forms right before our eyes. Thought patterns are contrived to distract us from our place in the present moment. There is no such thing as time and space. Just a three-dimensional light illusion simulating something called time and space. When we can be manipulated to leave the present moment, the seduction of the thought energy light illusion is able to control our strength and power. Staying in the present moment of awareness allows us to reconnect to our original state. We're no longer manipulated to be concerned over the past or the future. Since time is non-existent, then concern for the past or future is to forfeit your awareness for something that doesn't exist. Only the present moment exists. Staying in the moment by simply watching and waiting, not reacting ever, reconnects us to reality, allows us to take back our power from this Luciferian egregor group of thinkers, the manipulation by the three-dimensional physical state of everything is then nullified as we connect to the eternal state of awareness that state of no thing that state of no three-dimensional thing which in turn is nothingness our power and strength our wisdom and knowing exists in the moment before thought we have no thoughts of our own. All thoughts are implanted by the perpetual motion set into play from the beginning of this conjured up creation. We are taught to believe that a thought can originate with us. It can't. The three-dimensional system implants all our thoughts so that we then experience the reality they, the Luciferian thinkers, want us to have. Reconnect to wisdom watch and wait don't get upset when you're instructed to don't react when you're demanded to don't resist when you think you want to don't try to suppress your feelings when they tell you to suppress your feelings just observe these thinkers telling you to suppress your feelings and this little act of watching and waiting puts you in control of you you reconnect with your awareness and the manipulation perpetuated through the religious and intellectual systems of the world is neutralized. Nothingness is our original eternal state of patience, joy, beauty, caring, knowing, and freedom. It's the power of this awareness that these entities desire to control. You'll notice that the octagon symbol appears in red as a familiar stop sign. This is a symbol of total control. The octagon symbol is a major subliminal message used to seductively manipulate humanity into the precarious position of a pending devastation. This octagon is formed from one of the light atom symbols, which is a zodiac cross. This is the sun god on the cross. The light atom symbol is one cross. When you take this cross and give it a 45 degree twist, then overlay it behind the first atom symbol, in effect, what you have are two crosses which were used to form the atom symbol. These two crosses now form what is called the double cross. This is the cross of religion and intellectualism. This is the cross of duality, the cross of death, deceit, destruction, and every diabolical system known to man. Not only is this double cross the subliminal shape of the stop sign, a symbol of total control, it is the shape of the Freedom Tower being built to replace the World Trade Center in New York City. This tower has nothing to do with freedom, but has everything to do with the destruction of the undesirables or, in Luciferian language, the cleansing of the ungodly from the face of the earth. 
the elite implement this double cross at every opportunity when it comes to perpetuating and completing the agenda on behalf of the greed of the Luciferian thinkers. Their greed drives their desire to be worshipped as God. Their desire fosters thought and thought fosters the whole three-dimensional experience and the rest is literally history. <laughs>